Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about AMD Ryzen 9 7900X and what a chip this is. Now we have loads of uh, differences comparing to the past generation of AMD processors. First of all, a new socket. We have the LGA socket, but you already know that. You already seen all the reviews and everything. So I have loads of things to say and to mention about this processor i'm going to test it out well i already did we have loads of benchmarks we have loads of gaming synthetic tests and of course thermals but let's start with uh, normal standard specifications of the md ryzen 9 7900x the 7900x has 12 cpu cores and 24 threads maximum boost clock is up to 5.6 gigahertz Base clock is 4.7. We have an L3 is 64. Default TDP is 170 watts. And uh, the technology behind the processor is TSMC 5 nanometers thin fat. Uh, it's of course unlocked for overclocking. And the socket is AM5, which is now finally LGA. So basically removing the cooler won't uh, give you some fears of pulling out the processor as well because the socket hinge holds the processor to your motherboard now with that we have something different uh, there's there are no more pins on the processor the pins are on the motherboard and we have the cover here on the motherboard as you can see right here we have the asrock x670e taichi carrara which i used for benchmarking uh, maximum operating temperature is uh, 95 degrees celsius so the code name behind the processor is Raphael AM5. The architecture is Zen 4. Processor technology for the CPU cores is TSMC 5 nanometer fin fat, while processor technology for IO die is TSMC 6 nanometers fin fat. CPU compute die size is 71 square millimeters. IO die size is 122 square millimeters and it supports AMD Expo uh, memory overclocking technology. It supports precision boost overdrive, curve optimized voltage offsets, and that's uh, basically it when we're talking about general specifications of the processor and the new socket, of course. Now, let's talk about what we're going to do today. So, uh, I did a build with this motherboard, as I already stated, ASRock X670E Taichi Carrara. And in this build, unfortunately, I don't have an extreme graphic card to pair it up with the processor. So the, some benchmarks which are based on the graphic card as well will look a bit uh, strange, but I'll explain that later on in uh, that terms. Since I use that graphic card in all other benchmarks, you will get some meaning and comparison to Intel 12900K, but uh, taking everything into consideration. So I use the MSI GeForce RTX 3070 Supreme X. We have RAM's Kingston Fury Beast RGB 2x16 at 6000 MHz, Kingston Fury Renegade Gen 4x4 2 terabytes in a Chieftex Stallion 3 with Seasonic Prime PX 850, and for the cooling, I used Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 addressable RGB. Now, everything here is quite important. First of all, we do need to have a good motherboard with nice VRM solution. Then the GPU, unfortunately, that's the GPU I used for all the reviews so far. Then when we're talking about the case and the cooling, uh, it's quite important to have a decent air airflow to get uh, some sort of, a, I would say, normal temperatures in terms of uh, comparison with other processors that I use because all of the processors that I tested tend to go in a case that has a good airflow. And of course, the Liquid Freezer 2, which I think it will be quite all right in terms of what I've got finally uh, in the benchmarks. So let's start with AIDA 64 Extreme Edition. Uh, I think you already seen in past uh, videos the thermals in those parts. So only CPU ticked uh, and the GPU, the 7900X went to maximum 74 degrees Celsius. The GPU went up to 55, but that's not the I would say an actual benchmark where you get the actual temperature and everything else. So taking CPU, FPU, system memory and cache, the 7900X went up to maximum 79 
degrees Celsius and the GPU raised at 61. The GPU temperature is quite normal, it goes around 60-61, but the CPU is also quite alright. If we take into consideration the new thermals that we have on the Zen 4 architecture, I would say this is quite outstanding. Now Indigo benchmark, in bedroom uh, it got 3791 points while supercar 8650. The thermals in Indigo benchmark went up to 89 degrees Celsius, which is still good. Then we have, okay, I used uh, Cinebench R15 and R20, even though they are uh, older ones, uh, 4689 in multi-score, a single score 321 with thermals 89. So it's staying the same. Cinebench R20, 11,153, while single 786, temperature went up to 90 degrees. Comparing uh, i9-12900K to 7900X in R23 Cinebench, Multi-score for the 7900X was 28,432, while the i9-12900K was 27,000. So that's like 1,300 less Cinebench points for the i9. And when we go in the single core, 2020 for the 7900X, while the uh, i9-2002. For the single core, uh, well, we can see that it has some 18 Cinebench points advantage on temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. Corona 1.3, now here's the interesting thing. Corona 1.3, time to render that picture took 7900X 50 seconds, while the i9 took 64 seconds with rays per second 9,672,000 with temperature on 82 degrees Celsius. I would say that it all depends on the benchmark, but we'll get to that point later on. I also use CPU-Z not for the benchmark, but just to stress test the CPU and to see the thermals, it went up to 86. So again, now Geek benchmark, uh, single core for the 7900X, we had 2199, while the multi-score was 18367. And then... I used the benchmark that I actually never used before just to see how it will perform. So Povwin 3.7 with all the results in the benchmarking and I'm going to exclude those. But just to see the thermals, 94 degrees Celsius. Then we go into V-Ray benchmark 5.02. Uh, V-Samples 21,723 with thermals of 89 degrees Celsius. And then... We go to 3D Mark with CPU profile going with maximum cores, so 24, 16, 8, 4, and 22, and 1, with thermals going 81, 80, 77, 73, 69, and 67. So even the maximum thermals on the 3D Mark CPU profile went up to 81, which is still good. And then we have Time Spy, so I've seen loads of different uh, scores in TimeSpy and mines are just as I've shown you right here. So the, the temperature went up to, it was somewhere around 59, but the maximum went up to uh, 78 degrees Celsius and the CPU score was 12,628, which is just a bit behind 12900K. But all this synthetic benchmarking, I don't know if that means anything to you or you just want to see the results, but uh, here we go. Battlefield 1 on ultra details, 176.3 FPS in average, while the 12900K is 173.3. The same thing happens in Battlefield 5, we have 3 FPS difference, uh, then we have 3.2 in Cyberpunk uh, 2077, Destiny 2, also 3, Far Cry 5, a bit even more, and then we have this, uh, some sort of a difference with 3 to 4 FPS, and when we go and take into consideration the RTX 3070, and compare it to, I've seen some other benchmarks where they use the RTX 3090, what happens is that on average, the 7900X got 195 in uh, Shadow of Tomb Raider, while in Cyberpunk 2 it got 108. So basically if I used the RTX 3090 with 12900K and 7900X, I would get a completely different scores in terms of higher FPS for both processors. 
but since I use the same graphic card with both processors, I got a bit lower FPS just because of the card. Maybe if I used my 3080 Ti, but unfortunately it's in my uh, custom build right over there, uh, it would get some scores more higher to the ones that I mentioned that I've seen from other reviews. But this is what I wanted to show you guys with the same graphic card, with the same, uh, almost the same build, except for, of course, the motherboard. It has the advantage over 12900K. But then also in 1080p on ultra details with the RTX 3090, the average on the Shadow Tomb Raider and the 7900X, it goes up to 247 on average, while with the 3070, it got 158.2. So there is a huge difference between those two cards. After all, it, it is a huge difference. And we get a different FPS count. But when we take into consideration the same benchmarks in terms of uh, having the same card constantly in the uh, in every review, we get scores that show that 7900X is really up on front of 12900K and it gives some advantage. In synthetic benchmarks, it really does go really in front of 12900K, giving us, I would say, more into performance while work render and stuff like that, while in gaming does have a slight advantage. Comparing the prices, I think we can all conclude that 79 100x in those terms takes the win because with the slight performance increase it does give us uh, more value for money talking about the thermals everybody's saying the thermals are new normal and uh, everything is as it should be but all the benchmarks that i did over here with synthetic benchmarks and even in games uh, the thermals don't hit 95 degrees Celsius unless it's really something demanding like I did with Pope Win 3.7 which reached 94 degrees Celsius. But taking into consideration all my past benchmarks with uh, AIDA 64 Extreme Edition taking CPU, FPU, system cache, uh, system memory and cache going maximum up to 79 degrees Celsius while the 12900K reaches 88 with much larger so 360 280 or 420 reaches 88 degrees Celsius, I would say these thermals are quite alright when we take that into consideration, right? Don't get me wrong, I'm still used to the 50, maximum 60 degrees Celsius and uh, even going lower if it's a custom loop. So I'm still trying to apprehend the new thermals in the uh, new processor segment, but this is it. I know you'll think the gaming segment of the benchmark isn't uh, that valid in terms of how can I use a mid-range card into, uh, and pair it up with a high-end CPU. The problem is the graphic card problem last two years was really something out of control and uh, honestly since I finance my graphic cards on my own and uh, basically all the cards that you most of the cards basically that you've seen on this channel are actually coming out of my pocket this is what i could afford for these benchmarks of course i would really like to have a low tier mid tier and high end tier graphic card just to be able to pair the 7900x with rtx 3090 or 6900xt and 7600x with some mid-tier graphic cards just to get more valid and more uh, I would say I wouldn't say valid because all these benchmarks are valid and this is what I got now I would really like to have all those cards in terms of to give you more I would say realistic approach because you pair a processor with your graphic card and you pair your graphic card with your processor to get equal amount of performance from them so they don't bottleneck for some reason right so this is something that I'm trying to achieve in, let's say, hopefully in the next year to give you guys more realistic results and not just give you a comparison between two processors. Because these FPS can be achieved much higher if the graphic card was in a higher tier. So there's that. But all in all, the conclusion to everything, processor doesn't hit 95 degrees Celsius if you don't push it to the extreme measures in gaming it was like 70 75 maybe even hit 80 it even got lower so it all depends on the game on the cpu load and everything else as per usual in the synthetic benchmarks i would say an average was 
89 degrees Celsius, which was still quite all right if we take everything into consideration what I said before. And uh, beating uh, i9-12900K in all games and definitely in most of the benchmarks, excluding one, which was 3D Mark Time Spy, I think that's quite all right. So guys, let me know your thoughts on the 7900X and in general, the new platform, what we have from AMD. Quite curious what you think and we can definitely discuss it in the comments. I'll place the links below for you guys to check out more details about the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X. And of course, if you're interested in this kind of motherboard, ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrara, quite outstanding looks. Thank you for watching today's one. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and stay on the channel so you don't miss any future content. And hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.